Hello everybody and welcome back to the next video in our character creation series. In the last video we left off with creating our little spawn animation and getting an animation notified to work with that. In this video we're going to look at adding a weapon inventory and make it so we can switch between our weapons and cycle up and down through them. In the next video we're going to look at actually shooting our weapons so this is going to be fun. Let's start off right away. We are going to add another info structure and a data table to define our weapons. So let's create those. Right click and go to blueprints, select the structure and we're going to name this weapon info struct. The next thing we're going to do is create another data table. So right click, go to miscellaneous and do data table. And over here we're going to select our weapon info struct we just created. So click that one click OK and we're going to name this a weapon info table like so I already misspelled something here so let me quickly correct that weapon info struct like this now we're going to put a few variables in here so let's open the struct first and let's pull this down a bit so we can see what we're doing now the first variable we're going to add in here is going to be our display name, so we'll call this display name, and it's going to be a text variable, so select text over here. The next one is going to be our weapon type, so click new variable, uh, call this weapon type, and that's going to be a string. I'm going to add a tooltip to this one. This is going to tell us if we're firing a normal weapon, a shotgun, or a special weapon. So either a normal shotgun or special. The next variable is going to be our fire type. That's also going to be a string. And we're going to use this to tell if we're firing a single shot, an automatic, or a burst weapon. So either a single auto or burst the next variable is going to be our shot count so add one again call this shot count it's going to be an integer so change that and this one we're going to use to tell how many bullets are in a burst or how many pellets are in a shotgun shot so let's enter that over here number of bullets in one burst or number of pellets in a shotgun shot does nothing for other weapon types so this is only for using a shotgun or a burst weapon otherwise we're not using this collapse that the next variable we're going to add is our max ammo stock that's an integer, so that's okay. And the next one is going to be our max ammo clip. And that's also an integer, so just leave that one. And the last three we're going to create for now are going to be floats. So create a new one, call this one fire delay, and change it into a float. The next one is going to be our burst delay. That's also a float, and the last one for now is going to be our reload time. And again, that's going to be a float, so that's fine. Now let's put in some default values over here. The default weapon type I'm going to use normal. Default fire type is going to be single shot. Default shot count, leave that to zero. Let's put some default ammo values in here, the fire delay something like 0 0.08 should do and let's put a reload time of 1.5 something like this. These are just default values we can change them so save and close this and now we're going to go to the data table and add some weapon rows in here. So click the little plus sign the first one I'm going to call Murdoch primary And I'm going to keep the default values. I'm just going to give it a display name and I'm going to call this one primary. 
Now let's add a second weapon, click the little plus sign again, and I'm going to call this Murdoch Secondary. I'm going to use that for the pistol he's got on his back, the little special shotgun type weapon, so I think it's called the spread shot. So I'm going to enter spread shot as a display name. It's going to be a shotgun type of weapon. It's going to be single shot, that's fine. The shot count is ridiculously high for this weapon, so I'm going to put it to something like 18 or something. The ammo stock, let's put 36 in 6 or something like that. Let's crank up the fire delay a little bit, 0.15, and that should do it. And let's add a third weapon as well, and it's going to be a automatic rifle. So I'm going to call this Murdoch Rifle. Uh, let's call it something like AR, weapon type normal, and the fire type is going to be auto. Let's put some different ammo values in here so we can see we're holding a different weapon. And that should do it for now. So now we have three simple setups and we just have something to start out with. So we're going to save this and close this down. And we're going to add some stuff in our character blueprint. So open the base character, the parent blueprint. And we're going to add a bunch of variables again. This might be a good time to create some categories for your variables, so you keep things nice and organized. I'm going to quickly add a few, so bear with me over here. I'm going to put these ones in the player variables. So I'm going to create a category and I'm going to put all of these in there as well. I can't select multiple, so I have to do them one by one, I'm sorry. Let me quickly get this out of the way. Like so. Let's create a second category and I'm going to call that weapon variables. And I'm going to put the is aiming and is sprinting in there. Like so. Now all this does is create some categories to keep things nice and organized. It has no effect on the outcome. It's just for organization's sake. So the next variables we're going to add, I'm going to put in the weapon variables section. And so I'm going to duplicate these ones. Let's start off with the weapon inventory names. Weapon inventory names. And that's going to be an array of names. So change this to be name and click the little sign over here to make it an array, like so. The next one we're going to add is going to be our active weapon slot. So active weapon slot. That's going to be an integer. And that's going to be a single variable again. So change this back to single variable. The next one is going to be our switch to slot number. We're going to use this if we're going to switch weapons to tell us what slot we're actually going to switch to. So it's going to be an integer, that's fine, leave it like that. The next one, for the next variables I'm going to put CW in front of them, which stands for current weapon basically. So these hold all the variables for the weapon we currently have in our hands. So it's just to make things a bit more organized for myself. So I'm going to duplicate this, call this CW display name, and that's going to be a text variable. The next one is going to be CW ammo stock. We're going to make that an array of integers, so select integer and over here click the sign again and turn it into an array. The next one we're going to create is going to be CW ammo clip. And that's also going to be an array of integers, so that's fine. Next we're going to add our CW weapon type. CW weapon type. This is going to be a string. And it's going to be a single variable again, so change it back to single variable. 
and the next one is going to be our CW fire type and that's a string so that's fine the next one is going to be our CW shot count this is going to be an integer so change it the next two are going to be integers as well which going to be CW ammo or sorry CW max ammo stock and CW max ammo clip both integers so that's fine and we're going to add three more which are going to be floats the first one is going to be CW fire delay change it into a float the next one is our CW burst delay and the last one is going to be our CW reload time just like so now you notice these are the same variables we put in our data table row and we're going to get those from the data table and store this on the player if we wield this weapon so we're basically doing the same thing as we did with our character um, let's create a function first to add a weapon to our inventory uh, we're going to create a function over here functions click the little plus sign and we're going to call this add to weapon inventory and we're going to give it a few inputs so go to the right here and click the plus sign the first one is going to be our weapon row name and that's going to be a name the second one is going to be our inventory slot that's going to be an integer and we're going to add our start ammo stock which is an integer and we're also adding start ammo clip and it's also an integer so that's fine now we're going to make it so it sets our array so we're going to drag off this and we're going to do set array element first we're going to add the name to our array of weapon names so let's drag it in and drop it onto the target array the weapon inventory names we want to store it at the inventory slot so put the index on the inventory slot and we're going to get the weapon row name from the inputs as well so just plug it in like this and make sure you enable the size to fit so it expands the array if it's not big enough we're going to copy this node set array element we're going to connect the execution pin and we're going to set our mm, ammo stock so drag in the ammo stock array and drop it on the target array again we want to set it for the inventory slot that comes from the inputs so plug that in the index and we're going to set the start ammo stock so plug that into the item and the last thing we need to do is set our clip value so again copy the set array element node and connect it up drag the CW ammo clip array in this time drop it onto the target array again get the inventory slot for your index and we're going to put the start ammo clip into the item just like so so now if we call this this will add the weapon to our inventory array names and it puts the uh, ammo stock and the clip stock to the correct values we put in here so compile and save this it's going to give some default value stuff just ignore it if you compile again it's gone it's because we didn't set some defaults over here so that's fine we can close this down for now and we're going to add some other stuff first let's create two other functions so over here click the little plus sign again the first one is going to be called set active weapon verse so set active weapon variables and the second one is going to be called the server set active weapon variable so I'm just going to click the plus sign again and I'm going to call this server set active weapon variables like so both of these functions need one input so select it and go to the input over here it's an integer so that's fine and let's call this inventory slot 
and do the same for the server version so go to that one and again add another input over here and call this inventory slot and that's an integer so that's okay next thing we're going to do is go to the event graph for a little while and we're going to create two events <clears throat> so look for an empty spot I'm sorry and we're going to create a custom event and we're going to call this SVR set active weapon variables so SVR set active weapon variables you're going to want to set this to oh what's happening here now oh, my keyboard is screwed up again just a second like so server set active weapon variables so we want to set this to run on server and want it to be reliable and we want this to call the server set active weapon variables function so drag it in like this now we do need to give this one input so click the little plus sign over here and give it the inventory slot that's an integer so we can connect it up to this one connect the execution pin and that should do it for this so we're going to put a comment around this server set active weapon no uh, variables just like so and now we're going to create the functions so let's open the set active weapon variables first this one and we're going to do the next thing first we're going to get our weapon inventory names array over here hold control and drag it in from this you want to get so drag off this and do get a copy and we want to get the copy that's at our inventory slot right here so plug it in like this next thing we want to do is get the data table row so drag off the execution pin and type get data table row which is this one for the data table you're going to select the weapon info table and for the row name you're going to plug in the result that you got from the array now we're going to break the out row, out row I'm sorry and over here we have all the stuff we stored so we can now drag that over to our CW uh, variants basically so I'm going to drag all of those in in the correct order so first the display name then the weapon type fire type the shot count max ammo stock max ammo clip the fire delay burst delay and the reload time now let me tidy this up a little bit just like this and we're going to connect them up So make sure you connect them to the correct ones, otherwise you're going to get some weird results in the end. Just like so, and make sure these are connected up as well. Oh. Just like this. And now we're going to go and continue from the row found execution pin and we're going to check if we have authority or not so has authority if we are the server we're going to set these variables directly and if we are a client we're going to call the server set active weapon variables so this one after that we're going to set the variables locally as well and make sure you plug in the inventory slot for the server set active weapon vars so just get it from the input pin and drop it right on top of here now that should work just like this and now we're going to do the server set active weapon variables so just copy everything we got over here except the entry node ctrl c we're going to go to the server version and we're going to paste everything like so 
Now first let's plug in the execution pin and the inventory slot like this. Now we're going to delete the has authority and the event call like this. And we're also going to delete all the setters because we don't actually need any of this stuff on the server, but we're going to need some later. So we just want to have this set up. So for now we're going to leave it blank. Compile this and save this. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to make it so we can cycle through our weapons. Uh, let me check my notes real quickly. I'm going to scroll down a bit. So first let's add some new inputs for that. Let's go to the project settings. Under the engine go to the input section, action mapping and click the little plus sign. We're going to call this one cycle weapon up and add another one and call this cycle weapon down. I'm going to use the Q key on my keyboard and uh, for cycling down I'm going to use the E key. You can assign whatever you like obviously. So I'm just going to use those. Now let's go back to our base character and let's go to the event graph. Find an empty spot. And we're going to start off with the cycle weapon up event. So let me see. Let's get the event first. So event cycle weapon, cycle weapon up. Now we're going to create a function to tell us if we can switch to a weapon or not. So let's do that first. Let's click the little plus sign over here, create a new function, and let's call this can switch weapon. This function is going to have one input, and that's going to be our new weapon slot. So the slot we're about to switch to. That's going to be an integer, and it's also going to have an output, and the output is going to be can switch weapon. And that's going to be a boolean, so that tells us if we can switch to this slot or not. So if we have ammo or if the slot is occupied. Now let's disconnect this for now and we're going to add some stuff in between here. First we want to know if we have any ammo in our stock. So let's create a branch, hold B and click, connect the execution pin and we're going to do the weapon parse. We're going to look in our CW ammo stock, so hold control and drag it in. Drag off this and do get, get a copy. And we want to know what's in this inventory slot, so we plug that into this, like so. And we want to know if that's greater than zero or not, so integer is greater than integer. And plug that into the condition. So now if we have ammo in our stock, we're going to say we can switch to that weapon, so we're going to connect the true pin to the return node. And we're going to say, yes, we can switch weapons, so enable this. Now, if this is false, we're going to check if we have any weapon in our, of any ammo in our clip left, maybe. So make another branch from the false, connect it up. And let's get our CW ammo clip. Again, drag off this and do get a copy. We want to know what's in this inventory slot, so plug it in like this. And we want to know if that value is greater than zero, so integer is greater than integer. Plug this into the condition. If we have ammo, we're going to say yes, we can switch weapons. If not, we're going to copy and paste our return node. Plug the false into the other return node and make sure we cannot switch weapons, so disable it. And that does it for our can switch weapon function. So compile and save this and let's close it down let's close the other ones down as well like so and we're back in our event graph now what we want to do let me scroll down in my notes a little bit so first we want to set our switch to slot number to our active slot number so drag in the switch to slot number and drag the active slot number right on top of that like so and connect the execution pin just like this 
no we want to know if we are going to switch weapons do we not exceed our array size so we need a branch first hold B and click to create a branch connect up the execution pin and we're going to check if our switch to slot number plus one so drag in switch to slot number drag off this and do plus integer plus integer if our switch to slot number plus one is greater than integer is greater than integer and we want to know if it's greater than the size of our uh, inventory array basically so what we're going to do is we're going to drag in the weapon inventory names array drag of this and say length so that gives us the length of the array or the amount of uh, variables stored in there and we're going to do minus one because an array starts at zero and we're going to plug it in like this so if the slot number we want to switch to is greater than the size of our array we're going to go and switch to slot number one uh, slot number zero instead of uh, the next slot number so if this is true we're going to set switch to slot number to zero like this and if it's false so if we're still inside the bounds of our array we're just going to add one so drag in the switch to slot number drag it in while holding control again drag off this to plus integer and to plus one just like this now let's put a little comment around here let's say if slot number is greater than array size go to slot zero go to no next slot like this now the next thing we want to do we're going to create a loop in here and if we basically checked all of our different weapons and we still can't switch uh, we need to break it otherwise we keep looping and we're going to get stuck in here so we want to know if our switch to slot number oh that's a setter and we need a getter so switch to slot number is the same as our active weapon slot so drag in both of those while holding control do the equal and connect them up like this now we're going to add a branch here hold B and click and connect these setters up to the branch plug this into the condition and this tells us if we checked all our weapons so if all weapons checked so if this is true we do not have any other weapons we can switch to and we're going to stop execution so we're just going to uh, end it right here and we're going to continue from the false pin so what we're going to do next is call the can switch weapon function from the false pin so let's just drag it in like this connect it up to the false pin and we want to know if we can switch to our switch to slot number so we're going to drag that on top of here and this is going to return a boolean and that boolean tells us if we can switch to this slot number or not so we're going to add another branch after this and we're going to plug it in like so if we cannot switch to this weapon slot we're going to loop back to the beginning and we're going to check our next uh, inventory slot so drag off the false pin and we're going to plug it in right in here into the first branch now I'm going to make this look a little bit tidier so I'm going to double click on the line and I'm going to drag off a reroute node so we can see a little bit better what we are doing over here we're looping back to the beginning like so now if we can switch weapons we simply want to continue execution from the true pin so we're going to drag off there and let me see we're going to set our active weapon slot first so drag in a setter from the active weapon slot connect it up to the true pin 
and we're going to set that to our switch to slot number and the next thing we're going to do is going to call our set active weapon variables function to actually activate the weapon sort of speaking so let's plug in the execution pin and plug in the inventory slot number like this so now that makes a switch to the next weapon slot let me see if I forgot something here real quick double check this I think that should work so we are going to put a comment around this and we're going to call this cycle weapons up now we're going to basically create a cycle weapon down function and we're going to just copy a lot of this stuff so I'm going to select everything except for the entry node I'm going to copy and paste it now first let's rename this cycle weapon down and I'm going to look for the correct event so right click and do event cycle weapons down and connect that up to the execution like this but now we're going to switch the other way around so we need to change a few things uh, first of all let me see we're going to uh, change this into minus one so delete the plus one node drag off this and do minus integer minus integer minus one and we want to know if that's smaller than zero so we're going to delete this crap drag off this and say smaller than and plug that into the condition and let's change this as well if slot number is smaller than zero so if it is we're going to go to our highest slot number and if it's not we're just going to decrease it with one so first let's do the false one let's say switch to slot number minus one so delete the plus drag off this do minus and just plug it in like this go to the next slot and that's going to be the previous slot in this case and for this one we're going to do the weapon inventory names we're going to hold control and drag it in from this you want to get the length like so and we're going to decrease that with one and plug it in like this so that should work I go to highest slot like so and we can just leave the rest that should be fine I guess let me quickly double check over here yes that should do it I think so we're going to leave it like this compile and save this for now now all we need is a little hut to show what we have selected so we can test this if this is working so we're going to go to our UI folder and open our player hut and we're going to create a new section in here so first let's scroll down and let's look for a horizontal box drop that right on top of your canvas panel and I'm going to rename this I'm going to name this uh, weapon info I want to put it on the right side of the screen so I'm going to drag it to the bottom right like so something like this and I'm going to increase the size a little bit anchor it to the bottom right just like this now inside of here we're going to put one vertical box so drop the uh, scroll down here look for the vertical box drop it right on top of the weapon info next we're going to scroll up and look for the text widgets and we're going to drop two of those inside of the vertical box so one and two and we're going to set those up so select the first te text widget or uh, onto the right in the content section I'm going to give this a name I'm going to call this weapon name I'm going to set it to fill 
I'm going to make it a bit smaller, 16 font size, and I'm going to set the justification to right. And next I'm going to select the second text block, again justification to the right. I'm going to decrease the font size to 16. I'm going to set it to fill, and I'm going to enter MO value. And now we need to make it so they show the correct values. So we're going to select the first one, the weapon name. This one is going to be really easy. We're just going to go to the content text section. Click the little bind button over here, owning player, and we're going to bind it to the CW display name. Just select that one. For the MO values, we're going to need to create a binding. So select the MO value one. Again, go to the content text section, click bind, and do create binding. Now this will create a new bind function. I'm going to rename it. I'm going to say get mo values. And I'm going to disconnect these for now. So we need our owning player. So hold control and drag it in. From the owning player we're going to drag off and do get active inventory, uh, get active weapon slot, sorry. And we're also going to get our CW ammo clip. And we're going to get our CW ammo stock. Now, as you notice, these ones are arrays, and we need to get the values at the correct index. So, first, we're going to drag off the ammo clip array. We're going to type get a copy. Plug in the inventory slot, like so. And do the same for the ammo stock. So drag off that and get a copy. Again, plug in the inventory slot, just like this. Now we need a format text node. So right click in an empty spot and do format text. Select this node. And in this little window over here, you can type how you want to format it. So we're going to do an open curly brace and type clip, close curly brace going to add a slash in there. Again, open curly brace and call this one a stock and close curly brace. Now if you hit enter, you see this pop up like so and you can plug in the values we got above here. So I'm going to get the clip value and I'm going to plug it into clip. I'm going to get the stock value and plug it in the stock and I'm simply dropping the result into the return value. Connect these back up. We don't need anything in here. So that should do it for the HUD. Let's compile this and let's close this down. Now we are basically ready to test. All we need to do is give some weapons to our player. And for now I'm just going to give them right away at the start of the game. So I'm just going to open the child blueprint. I'm going to go to the event graph and from the begin play I'm going to drag off and I'm going to say add to weapon inventory. I'm going to copy this node, so I'm going to end up with three in total. Connect them up like this. The first weapon I'm going to give to my player is Murdoch. Murdoch primary. It's going to go in inventory slot zero. We're giving it full ammo, so 150 in 30. The second one is going to be Murdoch secondary. It's going to be put in inventory slot 1. We're going to give it full ammo, so that's 36 in 6. And the last one we're going to add is the Murdoch rifle. And we're going to put that one in inventory slot 2. And we're giving it max ammo, so 210 in 25. The last thing we need to do is tell the game what inventory slot we want to start the game with. So we're going to drag off this and say set active weapon variables. And we're just going to set them for inventory slot 1. So the active weapon we start out with is going to be our primary weapon. Compile this and let's play to check it out. Now you can see in the bottom right we have our primary weapon selected with our 30 and 150 ammo counts. Now if I press my cycle weapon keys I'm able to cycle through my weapons. From the AR primary spread shot you see the ammo types changing like they should. 
and I can cycle up and down. So I'm going. I can go from primary to the AR, back to primary. I'm uh, I'm able to cycle both ways, and everything looks like it's working. So that's fine. We have our inventory set up. In the next video, we're going to look at actually making a weapon shoot. So that's going to be fun. Okay, thanks guys. Talk to you later.